It's 2007. I am an out-of-the-closet teen, but not openly accepting about my interests in the furry fandom. It's quite a taboo topic amongst my something-awful goon older brothers. It's late at night, and I always use the excuse that I'm going to stay up late to watch Conan. But really, it's to use the internet in privacy. I find a comic that looks promising to a hormone-ravaged teen about a multi-generational gay household, roommates hooking up and nightclubbing. I didn't know it at the time. I skimmed it, looking for the yif that wasn't there. But what I found was a tome about gay male relationships, living in a world of HIV AIDS, and finding your chosen family. It's the year 2000. Steve Demansky, Andrew French, and Scott Fabianek, aka K9, begin work on the first issue of Circles. Intended on being a 12-issue story, the first eight issues get published on time, which is where I read up to in 2007. The story takes place in the year 2001. It's about the house that Polly runs at 6 Kinsey Circle. Polly is an older gay man living with his partner, Douglas, and several other roommates who rent the floors beneath them. The story is framed through Polly's journal addressed to Douglas each and every chapter, starting with Dear Douglas, and detailing the events that unfold in that issue of the comic. In issue one, a new roommate joins the already busy house, Marty. Through Marty, we get introduced to the rest of the housemates. Arthur, the artist who lives in the basement. Ken, the gym cat who uh, kind of sleeps around. And finally, Tay, a theater kid and Marty's new roommate. It's 2005. Circles is publishing in its first collected volume. It feels like I've been here before. And it does. It seems like I've been here before I can't remember when But I got this funny feeling That I'll be back once again Reading this book makes me feel so nostalgic for the time when I lived in a house bustling with furry roommates, friends coming and going, that pre-pandemic open-door policy where friends in the neighborhood can just walk in through the unlocked door and just hang out for a few hours to watch some TV or smoke a little weed. Those times had immense drawbacks too and I burned a fair amount of my own relationships because we weren't vibing as living partners. But Circles makes my house feel empty. But my heart feel full. Because I still do have a great friend group. They just can't all afford to live downtown anymore. It's 2009. I met a group of furs at a college night in the gay village of Toronto. They took me in and slowly I got used to the idea of being a furry IRL and seeing the furry fandom as more than just an online porn topic and subject of internet bullying. That summer, I started my first meaningful romantic relationship and made the move to a much better apartment and to my first furry event, Camp Feral 2010. You can't go to a furry event without a persona, so before I went, I decided I would be a bird and my furry name would be the last two letters of my regular name, RK. It's 2004. French and Damasky are invited to GOH Camp Feral, and gay marriage is legalized in Massachusetts, where Damasky and French live. They get married in December. The book takes place pre-marriage legalization, so Polly and Doug are husbands in all but official title. Polly had to jump through so many legal hoops to ensure that Douglas would be at his side when he passes, to make sure that everything Polly had would transfer to Douglas. During the AIDS crisis, same-sex couples would be denied seeing each other in the hospital, a privilege reserved for family. The L in LGBT was moved to the front of the alphabet to honor the lesbians who stood by the side of dying AIDS victims as their friends and lovers would be denied access. 
This legal discrimination was a huge barrier that most people couldn't overcome without a very supportive healthcare team, well-financed legal team, which our protagonist, Polly, does have access to. That's one of the many reasons why legalized gay marriage was and still is important. It's a right that can be taken away from us and a right so many of us around the world don't have yet. It's 2019. I am invited to GOH Camp Feral for my work on Culturally Eft. Like and subscribe. It's 1969, late June. The Stonewall Inn was one of the only places in New York City where men could dance with other men. It, like many other gay bars, was regularly raided by police. Until one night in June, when it was just too much and the bar patrons refused to cooperate, escalating into a full-blown riot that lasts two nights and gets a huge amount of international media coverage. Stonewall was a pivotal moment in the queer liberation movement. There were many demonstrations and even riots that happened before Stonewall, but that event in New York hit different. In the book, it's this event that convinces Polly to move to the U.S., starting his journey from England to New York to a distant relative in Boston who leaves him her entire estate. Over the years, Polly ingratiates himself as a staple of the local queer scene. It's 1981. Gay-related immune deficiency, GRID, is described to account for the illnesses and deaths of gay men that have been ramping up. This is always a terrifying thing to read about. Imagine your friends getting a cold and then dying in a hospital mysteriously just days later. Now imagine that happens to half of all of your friends in a three-year period, and doctors are still at a loss to describe what's happening. It was renamed to AIDS in 1982, when it was discovered that drug users were also contracting the illness. It's 1983, we're back in the books. A resident of Six Kinsey Circle, Greg, gets diagnosed with AIDS and commits suicide. Polly decides to remove himself from the queer party scene and to just be in monogamous relationships moving forward. Greg's wake is just as much the end of an era as Polly's send-off. In a drunken moment of poor judgment, Polly hooks up with Arthur's friend Keith, and a few weeks later he gets a call telling Polly he's HIV positive. Arthur blames himself. There's no straight lines make up my life. And all my roads have been There's no clear-cut beginnings And so far, no dead ends It's 2011. I'm in the role of Marty, joining a house of furries with my first serious boyfriend. I'm living with a household of furries. Many friends of mine live in similar circumstances. Houses full of furries. I'm discovering my own queerness learning the city and finding my own roots. It's 2016. My new boyfriend is discovering the fandom for himself with me as his Sherpa to ascend Mount Furry. It's his turn to be Marty and my turn to play Tay. To be the experienced hot Rue who knows the ropes, the city, and the players. Circumstance had us move in together very early in our relationship, not unlike Marty and Tay. It's 2018, and I feel like Arthur now. An artist who lives in the basement of the house, creating vivid portraits of his friends, though my chosen medium is video. It's 2008, and issue 9 of Circles is being written, but the artist K9 can't commit to creating the artwork, so they push ahead to publish the rest of the story as a novel with the occasional image. It's 2023. I'm rereading Circles more slowly and deliberately. I'm taken aback how I've been in the role of most of the characters throughout my life. 
I found and bought the complete collection of circles at Anthrocon this year. I found it so relatable how the authors also found themselves invited here to Camp Farrell, going to more cons. Their experience creating circles reminded me of my own experience here on YouTube. Their casual mentions of Glad Day Bookstore, which I was at the other day. Now I'm Douglas, worrying over my partner's anxieties, working on creating hearth and home for my friends. All my life's a circle, but I can't tell you why. The season's spinning round again, the years keep rolling by. It's 2043. This is how we all dress now. I am now Polly, teaching the young queers the ways of our past and the way to shape our future. I hope that in 2043 that I can create a thriving environment like the one that I grew up in and came into my queerness in. I hope that I can make space for the Martys and Tays of the future, giving Arthurs a space to create art and giving the Kens a safe place to play, giving them all a home and a family. While I am not HIV negative, I still imagine that one day I'll be just like Polly, supportive, caring, and the center of a chosen family. Polly's story isn't a tragedy. He is HIV positive, and his journal's entries have this distant feel about them, each starting with Dear Douglas. He's writing with the intention that these will be all that Douglas will have of him when he dies. He's anticipating his death of HIV and storing these memories on paper for Douglas to revisit when Polly passes. It's our narrative device to comment on the plot, set scenes, and wrap up storylines. It's also Polly's love for Douglas spelled out on every page. Wanting the best for both of them, even as Douglas blows up on occasion, cracking from the stress. Polly doesn't know when he might die when some complication might arise, a sudden illness that his immunity can't handle. He might fully outlive Douglas, but has no way of knowing. After all, most of his friends who got diagnosed with HIV AIDS died. Polly has the benefit of medication to keep him alive, and our generation has the benefit of PrEP, talk to your doctor. And the next generation? They might even have a vaccine! Polly feels like his circle is spiraling downwards, and these letters to a future Douglas is how he can keep the circle going. The journals themselves create a circle for Douglas, allowing him to relive their lives together through Polly's words. I've found you a thousand times I guess you've done the same but then we lose each other It's just like a children's game But as I see you here again The thoughts run through my mind Our love is like a circle Let's go round one more time It's 2021 and collectively we are coming out of an intense quarantine over the COVID-19 pandemic. The final bonus epilogue of Circles is finally published. It's at the first convention back in person even. The comic shows us the first big family dinner at the Kinsey House with all the new people coming in, a new college student, an old artist moving back in, and a new flame for Douglas. You can really feel how canine's art has evolved since the first issues. Each panel is so much more full and lush compared to the rather sparse backgrounds of the early issues. In the final installment, the epilogue written on the 20 year anniversary, Douglas keeps the journals going, but addresses them to his son. He continues the circle that Polly started so that Jason as a memoir of their lives, their loves, and the complicated wisdom that hindsight can give us. 
Circles isn't about a circle of friends. It's about a chosen family. Finding the best in each other and being our best selves for each other. It's about bringing people together through food, music, and camaraderie. Finding our place in our community. It's 2023 again. I'm recording this at my 8th Camp Feral. I've gone from passively making for media to actively making it. From exploring who I am in furry spaces to helping provide spaces to newcomers. And you're here listening to me talk about the fandom, but you're also making the fandom through your creativity, your empathy, and your dedication to a fairer and happier world. It's how the fandom comes full circle. The final 20th anniversary issue also comes with a full cookbook and party hosting instructions. So with that spirit in mind, I'm going to end this video with my recipe for chocolate chip cookies, which I got from my mom's copy of 1974's Betty Crocker cookbook. One cup of butter. You can substitute shortening but you get a drier and softer cookie. One cup white sugar, one cup brown sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, one egg, mix that together. Three cups flour, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking soda, chocolate chips and nuts to taste, about half a cup or to your preference. Chill in the fridge for 20 minutes, this is important. Chill it in the fridge, gives all those ingredients together. Then bake at 350 for 9 to 13 minutes. Bon appétit.